Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, my name is Cammie and what I like I'm completely doing everything on my own. So the lighting is a little bit different because I'm recording it on my phone instead of his phone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of excited, but I'm also a little bit nervous. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think. And now I'm gonna stop talking and I'm going to get right into the case. Now I will say, if you are triggered by talks of child abuse and child neglect, I highly recommend that you click off this video there will be other videos for you to watch of mine. This one really breaks my heart and it really reminds me of the Angela McAnulty case. Today we are going to be talking about the tragic death of five-year-old Jeffrey Baldwin. Normally what I like to do in these videos is I like to talk about what kind of person that the victim was before they tragically passed away, but Jeffrey was only five years old and I really only have what his sister described him as to go off of. I don't have much information about who he was as a person based on what his family said and that is because his family is the ones his family are the ones that did this to him and his abuser did not document who he was so since he was so young i really only have what his sister said about him to go off of Jeffrey Baldwin was born on January 20th, 1997 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada at the Doctors Hospital, which is located in Toronto. Jeffrey's mother was named Yvonne Kidman and his father was Richard Baldwin. And they had him whenever they were very young. I think Yvonne was like 24 when she had him. So not a teen and not like that young, but in the scheme of things, she was pretty young. Yvonne and Richard actually had a grand total of four kids together and it was like super quick that they had kids. It was like one right after the other. His older sister describes him as a kind and a gentle and a courageous young boy. And like I said, unfortunately, that is all that I have documented about him is what his sister said about him. On April 28th, 1998, Jeffrey and his sister were actually taken in by Catholic Children's Aid Society and they took them whenever allegations of abuse against the children by Yvonne. So whenever someone reported that Yvonne was abusing the children, they took them whenever these allegations came up. So I think actually all four of the children were taken because of the abuse allegations and they were actually given to the custody of their grandparents, Elva Botano. Elva Botano and Norman Kidman were the maternal grandparents of Jeffrey and his three other siblings. Elva kind of ran the house and Norman didn't really do much. From what I've read, he was kind of a, kind of like a, like a deadbeat. So I'm actually gonna be jumping around a little bit in this video. So just try and bear with me, please. So I'm going to briefly talk about Elva's upbringing. Elva was born in Pet 10, Penatengushini? I'm sorry, I'm butchering that name. Her parents were of Aboriginal descent and had 16 children, including Elva. Her mother left an abusive relationship and moved to Toronto with eight of her kids in 1960. At some point, Elva's mother remarried and apparently Elva's stepfather and others, so her stepfather's friends, allegedly sexually abused Elva and Elva's mother also kind of relied on her to take care of the younger siblings. Now I'm gonna read directly from an article that I found while researching this case, what Elva said about her upbringing. She says, I was the caregiver. So poor, she testified that the kids had to steal food if they wanted to eat, and Elva was forced by her alcoholic, jobless stepfather to leave school in grade nine. He said, we have a little bitch that'll take care of the kids for us. Out of the house at 16, she ended up having kids with the lazy boy she'd married and divorced before taking up with Norman Kidman, who fathered the next three. So in 2000, a worker at this Catholic Children's Aid Society place actually noticed a bruise underneath one of Jeffrey's eye, but they didn't do anything about it. You know, what is with CPS and... It 
it's like a trend I've found with these cases. Elva and Norman, whenever they took in the grandchildren, they weren't rich by they weren't rich by any means, but they also weren't like poor. They had pretty much everything that a normal house would have. So they had like computer, internet, game systems, televisions, all that kind of stuff that any normal like middle-class family would have. Neighbors said that Elva seemed like a great caretaker and they would constantly comment on how they don't know how Elva did it. They don't know how Elva took care of four children plus her own children. According to her neighbors and everyone that knew her, Elva was a very likable person and she just didn't seem like who she ended up being to them. Now there are four grandchildren that Elva is taking care of. The oldest girl who was 11 and the youngest child who was a four year old boy. And she took care of them and treated them super well. But for Jeffrey and his sister, it was a much different story. Jeffrey and his sister were kept in what is essentially a closet. They weren't allowed to make any noise. There was no heat and the windows were covered in paper. So you couldn't see inside of it and additionally since the windows were covered they received no sunlight at all into this closet that elva kept them in in this small closet there was a lock outside the door and only elva had the key to it so anytime the children were in this closet it was kept locked and no one was allowed to let them out there was no bathroom in this small room so they pretty much had to go in the corner if they had to do their business now, sometimes Elva would let the sister out of the closet so that way she could go to school, but it was pretty much like Jeffrey just didn't exist. He really got the worst of it. Jeffrey never saw daylight past 18 months and he was constantly filthy. He was wearing clothes that didn't fit him and that were dirty. He was just really living in squalor. Because of this lack of sunlight, Jeffrey's growth, both physically and psychologically, were stunted. And this was, like I said, between the lack of sunlight and the lack of nurturing that he received is what caused his bones to become soft and what caused him to just not be able to support himself. Jeffrey also wasn't going to school. So between all this at home and the fact that he was not getting an education, I can't imagine that his brain was developed very well. And that's actually proven to be true because according to Elva, he was a slow learner. And anytime she'd tell him to pick up a spoon, he'd pick up a fork because he didn't know the difference. Gee, I can't imagine why he's a slow learner, you filthy piece of human garbage. I hate this woman and look, if you don't wanna hear me talk shit about these awful people, I, I don't recommend watching any of my other videos because I don't feel sympathy for these people. I don't, I don't like these people. According to Elva, he was never potty trained. He never learned how to write and he was constantly sick, which you have him with no access to sunlight. You have him locked in this closet. Of course he's gonna be sick. Of course he's gonna have this fever that just never goes away. What do you expect? Now, Elva was not shy about abusing these two children, Jeffrey and his sister, in front of other members of the family. At dinner, she would make them sit in the corner while the rest of the family ate. And sometimes they would get scraps off of people's plates that they had to eat off of the floor like they were dogs. She would also make them fight over these scraps. So she didn't just give them scraps. She didn't give them enough scraps for the both of them, no. She would give them like, one piece of like a rib bone that they would have to fight each other to get. She would call them pigs and she would get the other children to call them pigs as well. And she would get these other two children to join in on the taunting of their siblings. She also during dinner would make them walk laps around the dining room table while the adults taunted them. So in this case, I don't just dislike Elva. I also dislike all of the other adults that joined in on this. There was one guy that was staying at the house that Jeffrey lived in because sometimes she would take people in and let them live there. And he commented on how sick that Jeffrey looked because like I said, she's locked this child in a closet. He's not eating, he's not getting sunlight, he's not going to school, he's wearing dirty clothes. And so he commented, he said, you know, Jeffrey doesn't look well, you should probably get him to a hospital. But Elva pretty much told him to mind his own business. So Elva was actually collecting child support payments for the sister and for Jeffrey. And that was the only reason she really kept them around. And I keep saying Jeffrey's sister because I can't find her name anywhere. And so that's why I keep calling her Jeffrey's sister instead of saying that, like calling her by her name. On November 30th, Jeffrey crawled upstairs because he was, 
he was too weak to walk, laid on his mattress, wept to himself while he waited to die. <sighs> Jeffrey died of sepsis and pneumonia, the underlying cause being profound and prolonged starvation. At the time of his death, Jeffrey weighed the same that he did on his first birthday, and he was too weak to even hold his head up. According to experts, he looked like a child starving from a third world country. That's how skinny this child was. Elva called 911 and paramedics got there and his eyes were open and his lips were blue. Now Elva was completely silent, but it didn't matter. She didn't need to talk because homicide investigation did the talking for her. They found criminal records from 1970 of Elva being a serial child abuser. She was a teen mom who had a daughter that mysteriously died of pneumonia at only five months old. They did a post-mortem investigation on her daughter and determined that she had bruises that were classic signs of child abuse. Elva pled guilty, but it was also revealed that two more of Elva's children had been abused abused in 1978 by her husband, Norman. Both of these children have received similar treatment that Jeffrey and his sister had received from being kept on dog leashes to being kept on dog chains. I hate this woman. I say that Angela McAnulty is the worst mother that I have ever done a case on, but this woman is in the top five. So my top five, Angela McAnulty, Elva Botno, Rachel Feisner, which I have a video on her plan to be coming soon. That, that Turpin lady, the, the Turpin, that whole case, and Casey Anthony. I wish that someone would have put this woman on a dog chain in a dog cage. That way she could feel what it's like to be put through the same suffering that she put these children through. On March 19th, 2003, both Elva and Norman were arrested on charges of second degree murder for the role in Jeffrey's death. Which, okay, Ooh. it's only second degree murder. Second degree murder pretty much means murder that was not premeditated. And to me, this seems premeditated. Like I said, I hate this woman. She abused these children. I absolutely think this was a premeditated murder. The court declared that they had kept Jeffrey locked in a closet where he lived in his own feces and left him to drink from a toilet. The judge was told that the pair had used the children as a source of income while not providing them adequate. On April 7, 2006, they were convicted of second degree murder by Justice David Watt in the Ontario Superior Court of Justice, and they received their sentence on June 9, 2006. Elva was sentenced to 22 years in prison and Norman 20 years until they were both up for parole, which Elva would be up for parole in 2028 and Norman in 2026, which is not that far away. I would not feel comfortable with these two monsters out on the street. So the Ontario Child and Family Services Act actually changed because of Jeffrey's death. It ensured that background checks were to be performed on caregivers before putting a child in their care, which if this had been in place before Jeffrey's death, he could have still been alive to this day. I mean, yeah, it's possible that she still could have found a way to kill him, but he at least would have had a chance because they had all of the files to prove that Elva would have been unfit to take care of Jeffrey. So Jeffrey's sister actually ended up being put in a different home after Elva was arrested and this ended up saving her life. She's still alive to this day because they took her from that home and put her in the care of someone else. So in 2013, an inquest was opened into Jeffrey's death, which if you don't know what an inquest is, it's basically an inquiry done via court system to establish the facts regarding someone's death. So Elva insisted on being there for what? I don't know just to be an awful person, I guess. So originally she had denied to testify at her trial. So it's even more strange that she wanted to be at this inquiry because she didn't want to testify originally. So like, why do you want to show up now? So usually they don't let people convicted of these crimes be at the inquest, but for some reason they let her, but it was under the grounds that she tried to not relitigate her conviction. So basically she didn't try to argue her conviction. And the coroner's counsel, Jill Whitkin, actually reminded Elva that she was not permitted to undermine the findings of fact made by the courts in convicting her and Norman, which those facts were that one, Jeffrey had died in her care. Two, that she had as the legal custodial figure 
failed to provide adequate necessities of life for Jeffrey and neglected to do so. Three, that she was the adult in charge of the house of horrors that Jeffrey had dwelled in. And four, that she had starved Jeffrey to death. <laughs> and this woman, <laughs> I don't wanna call her. Mm. I can't call her what I wanna call her because I'm, <laughs> YouTube would suppress me, but mm. She really tried to disagree with these facts at this inquiry. She tried arguing that none of this was true and that she was not responsible for Jeffrey's death. And when Jill Whitkin said, um, yeah, you did. We told you before that you're only here after agreeing to not argue it. And you killed this child because you didn't like him. And she again, <laughs> She said, no, I don't accept that. Like, okay, lady, you cannot accept it all you want, but it's, it's the truth. This went on for hours of them saying, these are the facts of the case. And Elva saying, no, that's not true. And this woman really had the nerve to say that she was Jeffrey's only hope in a dysfunctional family. What? <laughs> I'm laughing because this, this is crazy to me. This is insane. Like, Lady, they determined that you were the cause of Jeffrey's death and you agreed to not argue this fact. And here you are interjecting at every single chance that you get and saying, no, that's not true. This woman kept Jeffrey and his sister to fester in their own waste and drink water out of the toilet bowl. Jeffrey was so weak and malnourished that he, he only weighed 21 pounds at his death. He couldn't pull himself up the, off the stairs. And she had the nerve to say that Jeffrey was better off with her than with a foster family. So something else to note about Elba. So she had all of these like diplomas all over her wall for these internet courses that she did and things like child psychology, but they were all from like those websites where you take a fake course and they'd say, ah, here's your degree, print it off, do whatever you want with it. So she wasn't actually certified in any of these things that these de these degrees told her that she was. One of those was child psychology and it's like, okay lady, you are definitely not certified in child psychology. So on November 22nd, 2013, Todd Boyce, who is a fellow Canadian unrelated to Jeffrey Baldwin, started a $25,000 crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo over two months to erect a bronze statue in Greenwood Park, Toronto depicting Jeffrey dressed as Superman, who was his favorite hero. And they actually ended up getting way more than what they, well not way more, they actually ended up getting more than what the GoFundMe was originally asking. So the GoFundMe was asking for $25,000 and they ended up raising $36,015. So in July of 2014, DC had actually denied permission to use the S, like the Superman S on the statue, but they actually ended up later reversing their decision, I guess, because because of all the backlash that they got. And the statue was unveiled in the park on October 18th, 2014. Now here's where I have conflicting feelings. Yvonne. Jeffrey's mother has spoken out and essentially said that all of the allegations against her are not true and that they were all used as threats against her by Elva. And realistically, the only people that really know if that's true are Yvonne and her kids. But it's a pretty lengthy statement that Yvonne issued. If I can find it again, I'll link it in the description below. So Elva had apparently kicked Yvonne out of the house when Yvonne was 16 and Yvonne had a planned pregnancy with Jeffrey's father, Richard, and apparently sometimes they could get physical with each other sometimes. And sometimes they would, whenever they would get into these fights, apparently they would call Elva to ask for advice. According to Yvonne and records from Catholic Children's Aid, Elva would then report, so she would call this Catholic Children's Aid and report every single fight that Yvonne and Richard got into to them. I'm gonna read a direct quote from the article that I read. And again, if I can find it, I don't remember if I bookmarked it. But if I can find it, I will link it down below. As they lost custody of each child to the grandparents under what they thought were temporary arrangements, Botno would file for and get permanent custody in family court. The young parents couldn't afford a lawyer and didn't know they would likely qualify for legal aid, Kidman testified. It felt like they didn't have much choice but to agree to the grandparents getting custody, Kidman said. It felt like me and Richard were forced to sign it. 
Kidman said. It was either A, they went to my parents or they went to foster care where I would never see them again. Yvonne and Richard were also given court-ordered visits and Elva frequently denied those court-ordered visits. And that is the case of five-year-old Jeffrey Baldwin who if not for this horrible person of a grandmother and a grandfather that he would still be alive today. Like I said, I know it's still possible that he would have died, but at least he would have had a chance if they had not put him in custody of this evil woman. I hate this woman. I hope she has a horrible rest of her life, and I think it's ridiculous that she got such a light sentence. She should have gotten way more. She should have no possibility of parole. It should have been first degree murder and not second degree murder. That's my opinion, but I wanna know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.